In this video, we're going to discuss live data and observable, and we'll describe some unit testing considerations when you're testing live data with an observable. First, an animation. What is live data? Well, suppose we have a stream of some type of data. You can think about stock tickers, uh, maybe stock prices, or weather data, or even airfare, something like that, something that can change throughout a day. We have a view model using the model view, view model design pattern, and this view model has an attribute of live data or mutable live data or something like that. Now we have down here a couple of devices or a couple of apps that would be on devices, and these apps can observe the live data. In other words, when the data changes, these apps are made aware of that. Now over here we have kind of like a unit test harness, and that has observe forever. Slight difference between observe and observe forever, which we'll take a look at in just one moment. First, let's consume our first piece of data. The data comes to the view model and the live data, and then anything that is observing on this live data will receive that data that the view model received. So at this moment, everything that we see here is observing on this live data. Now live data is part of Android Jetpack, and one very important feature in live data, which is common with other Jetpack libraries, is that it is lifecycle aware. In other words, it knows when the app is actually being used. And that's very important because what happens when we try to serve some data to an app that is no longer actively being used by the user? Well, let's take a look. When the user backgrounds an app, it essentially pauses, and then it can also go to a stop state, but essentially pause means there's something obstructing the app's view. It could be a pop-up or something like that, but the app is no longer, uh, the, the user can no longer interact with the app. So we don't need to serve it live data anymore. So notice that the next piece of data that comes down is going to go to our unit test, which is set up to observe forever, and another app or another device, which is still active and operating. But it's not going to go to our device where the app has been sent to the background or the app has been covered over by some kind of alert or something like that. So this is automatic. You get this for free. Imagine what would happen if you didn't get this for free. You'd either have to programmatically connect and disconnect to this observable by overriding the on pause and the on resume methods. Or you wouldn't do that and you would end up with a memory leak because you would continue to try to serve data to something that's not able to receive data. So that's why live data is so powerful and so useful in this mechanism of keeping an ever updated user interface. Now, to understand why that's so powerful, it's nice to refresh a little bit on the Android activity lifecycle. We know that an activity is a user interface component in an Android application, and it has these lifecycle methods that we see here, on create, on start, on resume, on pause, and then from, from paused, we can go back to on resume. From paused, we can also go to stop, and from stop, we can go to destroy. So several ways that we can go here, and you notice there are several paths that will take us back to where we want to be. Essentially, if you're using an application actively, it is in the resumed state. It could either get there from on create, on start, on resumed, or on pause to on resumed, however it gets there. Now, uh, it goes to on pause if there's something that is obstructing the screen, but the screen is still visible. So some kind of pop-up or some kind of confirmation box, something like that, that is modal. In other words, it's taking the user away from the screen, but the user can still see the screen. On the other hand, if we switch apps completely and we background the app, then we go to the stopped state. Uh, and then if we close the app entirely, we go to the destroyed state. So you see there are varying levels throughout this life cycle, and at each level, there's a method that we can override on our activity. Now let's go back and see how this relates to ob observable. So uh, if we simply call observe, that means we're going to receive updates on live data as long as we are started or resumed. So notice started is here, resumed is here. Those are the only two states where we will get these updates. Any other state, it's automatically going to be turned off. 
Now observe forever, that's going to naturally observe forever. It's not going to automatically turn off. This is very useful in a unit test because a unit test is typically separate from an activity. We don't want to bind it to anything we don't need to, so usually it's just a separate class. So when doing unit test, we'll typically use observe forever. Uh, when consuming data in activity, though, we'll typically use observe. A couple other gotchas in doing a unit test. First of all, a unit test, we do need to single thread this, just the nature of observing. So what we'll do is we'll add a little annotation to the very top of our class. We'll take a look at this in the next video where we do a hands-on example. Also, I found that we need to add a test implementation library to our build.gradle. At the time of the recording, this is the most up-to-date, but you can see this is a 1.00 alpha 3, so very much subject to change. I encourage you to just search for this and find the latest version as you watch this video. So that's a look at live data and observable and a few unit testing considerations. Stay tuned for the next video in the playlist where we'll do a series of hands-on demos in a separate Git branch. I hope that's helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.